Fellas, you knew we were going to talk about it at some point. Genshin Impact. We actually have not made a review for this game because, well, it's the first gotcha game I've ever played. I didn't even know what the hell the gotcha was. And now, about $300 in. Oh, I know. Well, I know a little of it. Believe me, I've seen the stories. The amount of money that has been dropped into gotcha games. Anywhere from a few thousand dollars to $40,000. It's real, man. People actually drop entire mortgage down payments into these games. It's insane. But the question isn't whether or not gotcha games have gotcha before, but rather will Genshin also require a large sum of money in order to get the most out of this game. Today, guys, we're going to be going through some of the things I really, really like about Genshin Impact, some of the similarities that it has with some other games. We're going to talk about its longevity and what it's trying to do by being this live service game. So essentially its potential and then of course its monetization. I could tell you right now before we get into any of these points, Genshin Impact has already made a ginormous splash and I've made this comparison in the streams and a lot of people don't like this comparison, but I've said essentially that Genshin Impact is the Fortnite of like the action RPG. RPG genre. It really is. Whether you like Fortnite or not, Fortnite changed the scene for PvP games so much so that every arena shooter within a year all converted into a battle royale. Now, whether Fortnite started that trend or not, I know there was PUBG and other games. Fortnite, though, was the big one. That was the one that solidified, yep, player versus player experiences want battle royale. Now, obviously, not everyone. There's still games out there that are arena shooters that are very much still popular, but it was a trend that was set in stone by Fortnite. Genshin Impact is an action RPG game, open world, beautiful environments, and it does something that very few games have done, and that it stuns you in expiration. You ever heard the term, you just got Skyrimed? Okay, well that, that's a for real thing. You just got Skyrim, and by getting Skyrim, it means, hi, I'm gonna sit down for the afternoon and play a little bit of Skyrim. And all of a sudden you look up, and it's three o'clock in the morning. Now what happened? Well, I don't know, you tell me. You went into a cave, you came out the other side, and then you went into another cave, and then another cave, and before you know it, you're mining in this cave, and then you're up against a tree, and you're killing a pig, and you're breathing on dragons. You got Skyrim, man. The world made you lose yourself in it for hours. And before you know it, weeks go by, and you look back going, what the hell just happened? It's a beautiful experience, and very few games pull that off. Very few. Breath of the Wild is another one that pulls it off. Well, lo and behold, Genshin Impact, yeah, it pulls it off. You start off in Mondstadt, which is the main area. You begin exploring in this area, and you can follow the storyline, but you'll quickly find yourself getting lost in the world. One area leads into another area, which leads into another area. One chest location with enemies leads to another group of enemies. Oh, you found a temple. Oh my God, a world boss. It's 3 a.m. again. What the hell happened? Again, there's something about games like this that truly amazed me. They make time disappear. Very few games can pull that off. You see, a looter especially has a hard time pulling it off because you'll sit there and you'll keep looting the same area over and over again. The same bosses, the same encounters. You refine yourself, you get better, you keep doing it over and over again until suddenly you realize, hey, I know this system. I know what's up. Genshin's philosophy is to throw you in a world with so much crap to do that you have no way, at least initially, and when I say initially, the first 40 hours to truly grasp everything that's going on around you. You just get lost in it. And that's a beautiful thing. That's no mobile game, by the way. No mobile game has been able to pull that off with me. That's triple A stuff. Again, a very difficult thing for games to pull off, but Genshin pulls it off here. Now, that's one of the things I really like, you know, to just get lost in a game. If that's not gaming, I don't know what is. You almost forget yourself, and that's the way it should be. But the second thing I really, really like about Genshin is its take on combat. Instead of giving you a single protagonist and saying, hey, choose his class, spec him out, make him as nasty as you possibly can. No, this game throws you a variety of champions and the skill ceiling is not how well you spec one champ but how you spec all your champs and the skill gap really starts to show itself when combat is not a static action rpg loop that you normally see but instead requires you to swap consistently between many different champs and heroes and have each of those champions combo off of each other and they use elements to combo off of each other the swirl which is essentially wind crystallize electro cryo Pyro, Hydro, the main 
elements. I mean, just think Avatar, okay? Avatar. Matter of fact, the best way I can relate the storyline to is you're the last airbender, essentially. I know there's other airbenders, but you know what I mean. Now, upon specking your champs, then in order to really optimize your groups, because you're not just optimizing one character, no, you're optimizing your group, combos become extremely important. Hydro with Pyra, Electro with Cryo, Superconduct, Electro Charge, Overload, Melt, Vaporize. So many different combos in this game that all have different primers and detonator effects. Some apply debuffs, other apply increased damage, some apply more AoE damage. And I love how this is not tied to just specific champs, instead, this is tied to the elements, which allows all champions to partake in this, making every champion, for the most part, an optimal solution to utilize these elemental combos. Now, this would be a very difficult thing to pull off if the action side of things didn't match up with it. I gotta say, the variety of abilities, the different things that every character can do. And for the most part, all characters don't really have many options of an attack, but they're all different. So much variety here. So many different ways to combo these elemental combos. That isn't just primer detonator. That isn't just buff and debuff. No, there's so many different ways to approach combat. Some better than others. And I think that's the beauty of the game. Even though we do get lost in this open world exploration, as you begin to sink more and more hours into it, and you start going up against world bosses, you start doing these dungeons, you start doing harder content, abyss, etc. You start to ask yourself, how can I optimize my team even more? Now, something else we have to give credit to in this game, and I mean, it is phenomenal. The voice act. Now, granted, I'm not doing the dub, although I have heard that the dub is really, really good. Great American voice actors. We, however, have actually been using the Japanese voice acting, and I am in love. Believe me, I don't understand any of it, but it is sexy. Also, it makes the character that goes along our main character, Paymon, much more bearable. Now, I know I haven't really touched him on the story because, well, I don't necessarily think that's a huge strong point here. Although there's some rumors that an anime is going to come out about Genshin Impact. Yeah, I don't know if that rumor is even true. If it is true, though, holy hell, that's going to be insane. It, it kind of fits, right? The game already looks like an anime. Most of us like to watch animes. And if you're not a fellow weeb, it's okay, man. But I will say this game has a lot of similarities to, you guessed it, Breath of the Wild. Some people have said that it's just flat out copy Breath of the Wild. I even said it because there are many mechanics very similar to Breath of the Wild. Gliding, for instance. Attack animations. Ads that look identical to Breath of the Wild. The way elements work. Fire works. Gliding works. Gliding from fire. Swimming. The only difference is the stamina bar, but it might as well be the same thing. But here's why it doesn't catch as much hell. Because not everybody owns a Nintendo. And even though a lot of us do love Zelda, I love Zelda. At the end of the day, I think we all prayed and hoped to play Zelda on PC without using a damn Wii simulator. Genshin answered our prayers. And even though this game does draw a ton of inspiration, from Breath of the Wild. I could say after 40 hours, it is very much different. I mean, it is a completely different game. There's just a lot of good things that it brings from Breath of the Wild, which is why when people come into the stream, they go, hey, what game is that? I'm like, hey, it's Breath of the Waifus with the gacha system. Now, speaking of which, let's talk about that because longevity of this game is directly tied to its monetization called the gacha system. You see, in the game, as you begin to do quests, as you pretty much do everything in the world, you get these things called Primo Gems. Now, Primo Gems, can be used to purchase fates. And these fates can be offered up as wishes. And that's exactly what they are. They are a wish, a prayer. Like, I don't know what you need to do to pray to the RNG gods, but everything is on the table when it comes to these damn wishes, man. Some people joke about sacrificing goats. I'm getting close, okay? If I don't get Diluc, I can tell you right now, a goat may very well be on the table in the future. But for real though, these wishes are addicting. I mean, really, really. The whole process of watching one of these wishes go up into the air, explode like a shooting star, and rain loot upon you. Sets off dopamine glands in places you never knew existed, man. And that's how you know it got you. And before you know it, you're breaking out old American Express or MasterCard or Visa. You're getting that credit line extension. I've got people coming in the stream saying that they're thousands of dollars overdrafted on their bank statement because of this game, which is my warning to you. If you might be a gambling addict, if you cannot control your spending habits, if you got a thing for waifus and you just cannot stop yourself, stay away 
away from Genshin Impact. The game does offer you free wishes, and there's a lot of things you can do in game to get free wishes, but the drop rates for the five-star champions, the super rare champs, the ones that you all want, and I want too, are so damn small that I don't know anyone that has all the five-star champs at this point that have not spent thousands of dollars. You see, Genshin here, the freaking geniuses. They give you a free-to-play game. They say, hey, yeah, hey, you, you can play this entire game with the heroes that we give you. Yeah, go right ahead. Play the game. They make it a game where you can get lost in exploration. And as a single-player experience, that's exactly what you would do. But like most of us, we may see a guide or two. We may see someone streaming the game. And when we go to check out that guide or that stream, we see Diluc, we see Kaching, we see these sexy champs, and we're like, oh my god, how did you do that? What is that ability? How the hell did you just one shot that boss? And suddenly our brain starts telling us we got to have those heroes. And that is essentially how the gotcha system is currently in place. Now, there are certain banners that you can purchase these fates and wishes through that have an increased chance of giving you champions. So for instance, the Venti banner gives you like a 50% increase of dropping in Venti and some other champs. Now, whether or not that's going to rotate to other heroes, I have no idea. All I know is that this game has effectively made us want these heroes. And they did it great because as you do story missions, you can to have like a small trial period with Dai Luke and these other champs. Oh, hey, yeah, you want to play with this character that absolutely slaps and looks sexy while they do it? Yeah, you like that? Gotcha. And before you know it, you're dropping your car payment on this damn thing, trying to get that champ. Which is why I say to anyone that comes in the stream, the people that win in Genshin Impact are not the people that have all of these heroes. That's not the winners because we know they didn't get them legitimately. If you've got all the five-star champs right now as a free-to-play player, you are a liar. No, the player who wins, really, the player who actually wins in Genshin is the player that goes from start to finish, plays the entire game, future content, etc. All those things without ever spending a dollar. Those are the true winners. But see, that's where Genshin gets you. As you play the game, you realize that spending a few dollars here and there would substantially help you. Maybe it's a few items you're trying to get. Maybe you're trying to level up. And these things don't become noticeable until past, I would say, Adventure Rank 25. Past Adventure Rank 25, you start to realize that this game game becomes a total cuck fest. Oh, you want to keep progressing your adventure rank? Get cucked. You want to ascend your character? Get cucked. Oh, you want to get a new champ? Get cucked. So the game is essentially Breath of the Waifu's Cucked Edition. Sounds like some nasty parody stuff, right? But for real, that's essentially what happens after AR25. Now, if you're patient, you go, hey, I'm okay with that. I just want to log on every day, do my dailies, do my thing. I'm not in a big rush. I'm the tortoise in life. You're a clear winner. You probably buy bonds and CDs, got that 401k tucked away. You're perfect for this game. Matter of fact, you're the audience that Genshin absolutely despises. No, what they like is they like me, man. They like they like us. They like Mtash. They like some of us out here that have already dropped hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on this game. Folks that can't wait until tomorrow. Or they could if we, if we were patient enough, but we're not. So the game is not necessarily paid to win technically but it is pay to flex pay to no longer be cucked and that's essentially what Genshin is and even though I understand that wishes have to exist on some level I think there's too much that's tied to it I think weapons your really really good weapons being tied to wishes alongside your heroes and champs is too much this game has made a hundred million dollars in its first two weeks and believe me that number is just gonna still keep going again like I said it's the Fortnite of this genre however this game will not have longevity or the staying power if it decides to break it off into their player base. I think the only reason why they're getting away with it right now is there's those cases where folks come in the stream and they go, oh man, I got Diluc on my first row. Oh my god, I got Kaching first row. And it's stories like that. Almost like the gold rush, right? That makes all of us swarm thinking we all got a chance. 0.6%. We got a chance, man, but we really don't. The reality is Genshin Impact is in a beautiful package on the outside it looks like one of the most polished games ever created because yes it is one of the most polished games it's drawn inspirations from many types of games out there but it's definitely its own but on the core inside it does have a monetization system that is addicting that is scary i have a son of my own he's three years old i wouldn't let him play this game i just wouldn't it's not like you just go to the store and directly buy a champ and boom you get to play with it no it's a gambling system it's what it is and i like to just call things out for what it is it's a fun game game but from the 
experience, from the loot, from the XP throttling, which essentially is what it is. I mean, call it how it is, fellas. You start to get throttle in the later ranks majorly. You're out here sipping for raisins, reasons, whatever. It's these acts that all have a purpose. They all drive you to buy a few more wishes. At this point, Genshin, in my eyes, seeing the initial success that they've obtained, seeing how well it's actually being received here in the West, surprisingly, this is the moment that I think they need to ease up on their monetization and start making things in the wish tabs available in game. And honestly, I'm actually okay with champs being inside of the wish tab only, or at least your five star champs, right? What I'm not okay with are the five star weapons that are also tied to the wish tab. The weapons that require refinement. And you see this increased rarity, this absurd amount of rarity are all things just to extend the grind time. All things to keep us logging in every single day, which is why experience really drops off and it turns into a daily login situation to complete your commissions. This is to keep you on that drip. Again, I'm new to this, man. If this game wasn't so much fun to play, if I didn't respect the time that was put into each one of the channels, champions and their abilities, the dev hours that must have went behind, coming up with the combat systems, the world, the environments, I would be completely ripping this game in two. Absolutely. It's monetization systems like this that is a black guy on a game that could have been game of the year. But everybody just goes, oh well, it's gotcha, man. That's just how gotcha is. Again, the longevity of the game as being a live service game. And we saw the co-op event this past week with the Elemental Crucible, which was fun. You got to play with other players. It's enjoyable and a decently challenging event. The game's future success is completely in the devs' hand. Completely. I personally think if they eased up on their monetization, that would go a long way with their player base. As far as what other things they can add in this game, there's been rumors of raids, which I have no confirmation on that, but there's rumors of them. Other co-op events, and we saw the element of Crucible, which was fun. I've seen that they've been able to pull off co-op for the most part, even though it is still janky. What I personally think, though, is that the devs know how hungry this player base is, because you just saw how quickly people chewed through the ranks of this game. I don't see the monetization of this game changing. I think there'll be some slight tweaks, maybe some increased drop percentages for certain champs. But for the most part, that's what keeps you playing in this game. That level of rarity is what makes this game desirable to people. It's pay to flex. It's all it is. It's pay to flex. And that's really how this gotcha system works. So fellas, that is our thoughts on Gitchen Impact. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you think I'm crapping on your game, well, I kind of am. Call me a boomer all you want. But back in my day, we used to shit all over games that had monetization like this. Loot boxes was a no-no. And here we are. There's a lot of great things that Genshin has pulled off. Hopefully the devs decide to take the long-term approach and cultivate a community that can truly last for the next decade. I'm not joking, man. Genshin has that type of staying power. But if they decide to take the short-term cash out option, then I truly believe they will effectively kill their own game. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.